Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. In today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I made this into this. So I did this piece for a commission. She already had a bed set and wanted a nightstand to match. So she gave me this image and said, create that. So I went ahead and did that. She had very specific measurements, heights and whatnot because her bed was pretty high. So she gave me all that information and I went and did it. So uh, without further ado, let's get to it. So I bought this piece off of Facebook Marketplace for $45. And the first thing I wanted to do was just to give it a once over and see all of the little nicks and repairs that needed to be fixed. But overall, it actually was a really nice piece and it went perfectly with my client's decor. So the first thing I wanted to do before anything was to give it a good clean. And to do this, I am using a vinegar and water solution and just wiping it down with a cloth. And then afterwards, I made sure to go in there with just a cloth that had water on it to get all of that residue off. So the main surface of this nightstand had some major scratches and dents in it. So I wanted to go in there with 120 sandpaper and just get all of those out. I knew that the veneer on top was probably gonna be thin, which is why I started the grit so high so that I didn't pierce through the veneer right away with a lower grit. And so I didn't have to sand it so many times to get a nice and smooth finish. For the drawer fronts, I wanted them to match the top of the piece, so I went in and sanded the trim, just the faces and edges of the trim. I didn't want to go in there and ruin any of that nice kind of trim detail that it had on the inner sides. So I just went and sanded the flat surfaces so it could match after I stained it. Once all of that was done, I went in with my vacuum and just got the majority of the sawdust off of there so that I could go in there with a damp rag and kind of wipe it off and just make sure I get all of the dust off before I start doing anything else to the piece. For the little bits of damage that were around the piece, I actually got a like staining pen and it actually worked really, really well. I went in there with a darker stained pen that I'll make sure to link in the description below. And I just pressed it up against the nicks and spots where um, there was damage done to it. And those scratches and chips and everything just kind of disappeared and it worked incredibly it was almost an exact match not quite but good enough and it covered them up great before i got started on anything else i wanted to make sure to take the hardware off and replace it with the new hardware that i had gotten at least on the top drawer because I wasn't gonna be doing anything else to this top drawer, I just went ahead and placed the new hardware. For the faces of the drawers, I am going to be placing cane or like woven rattan onto the faces of them. So in order to do that, I wanted to make sure that my holes were drilled for my hardware first before I put the cane on top and that way, I could just put the cane over it and not worry about tearing the cane or anything when I drilled the holes into it. So I did that first and then I went ahead and measured the exact measurements for my cane and then went in and, oh, by the way, just, just look at how cute my mini tape measure is. I love it so much, it's adorable. But anyways, I went in and cut the exact measurements into my cane and I don't like to waste my cane because you know it's really expensive so I tried to use as much of it as possible and not cut off you know excess pieces or anything like that other than the scraggly edges on the outer sides so I made sure to start at the top 
and go as close as I could to the very edge of the piece. The cane. Not the piece. The cane. Before you work with the cane, you want to soak it in some water, and this can be lukewarm temperature or whatever you want, but after you let it sit for about 30 minutes, you take it out and shake it off, and then you try to get, you know, as much of the excess water off of it as you can. And I just did this by laying a towel down and kind of just pressing on it with the towel and this got a lot of the water off but still maintained a little bit of moisture so that it was still workable. So to get it onto the face of the drawers, I made sure to staple one in the middle at the top and then I pulled it tight and then did the same thing to the other side. And cane, when it's wet, it expands. So when it dries, it'll be even tighter than it is when you start working with it. And so don't worry about it if it's, you know, a little loose or baggy almost. It'll tighten up once it dries. And when it comes to stapling, you don't have to be as, you know, strict about where you staple. And you don't have to staple so close together as you usually would because we are covering up the edges with trim. And here I am at Home Depot picking out said trim. This trim is the perfect width that I wanted. It will cover up all of the outer edges and still matches the general style of the piece. So it looks really great with it. For the trim, I made sure to measure again, just to make sure what my measurements were. And then I marked it with a Sharpie where I needed to cut it. And then I used this handy orange triangle to make sure that I had a perfect 45 degree angle for those corners. So I went ahead and used this little guy right here because I don't have a table saw. So because you want the thicker part of the trim to be on the same side at like all the way around, you want to make sure that you are having little triangles in between your pieces. And this will, yeah, I don't know if you can really understand what I'm saying. I'm, I might not be explaining this well, but thicker side, you want the, um, you want the length of the trim, the widest length of the trim to be on the thicker side and the shortest length, the part where the triangle goes inwards to be on the thinnest part of the trim. I don't know if that makes sense, but anyways, this is how I'm doing it. I hope that you can see it better than I'm explaining it right now, but um, I'm doing the same thing even for the smaller parts of trim. And then I'm gonna go in there and sand off all the little nicks and stuff that was left by the wood underneath. And I just took a piece of sandpaper and did it by hand. That way I didn't take off too much of the trim and I just smoothed out those edges. Before you get to gluing, you might want to hammer down your staples and this will just make sure that when you glue your trim down, it'll stick directly to the wood instead of getting blocked by the staples. And this will just make it a lot easier and a lot more flush. I'm using Gorilla Wood Glue for this one and I'm just putting a hefty layer onto the trim itself flipping that trim over and getting it stuck. If you guys don't have clamps, Now's a good time to get some because you will need a lot of them. Like 
a lot. When you are about to clamp down anything, it is a good idea to put something between the wood that you want to preserve and your clamps because sometimes they can leave dents into your wood. So I'm using an extra piece of trim here and clamping down on that so that the wood underneath stays nice and pretty. And I actually did it like this for, you know, a good amount of time, but then realized that the drawer faces come off which was just so helpful because I was doing one side at a time, which was just not, not the way, not at all the way. And it sucked because I only have two really long clamps. The smaller clamps only fit in the sides where the hole actually was for the drawer. So I couldn't get my smaller clamps, you know, to clip on anywhere. So I had to use my big clamps, which I only have two of. So. Getting this drawer face off was a game changer for sure. And yeah, I was able to get her done. For the legs, my client actually needed a really high nightstand. So I ended up buying some matching legs off of Amazon or Etsy, I'm forgetting now, but I'll make sure to link them below. But they matched pretty much perfectly and they came with their own bases. So I unscrewed the old ones and replaced them with the new ones and just tightened in those legs and added a couple inches to the height because my client had a really high, you know, bed, so she needed something that would fit that. So she needed a high nightstand. And here we are. We got ourselves a high nightstand. Once I let everything dry overnight, I took off the clamps and went in to put in the hardware. And this wasn't so bad. I had tested it before, so I knew that the hardware was placed right and I knew that it was straight, so it was all good. So all I had to do was put the screws in there and tighten them up on the hardware. Into the hardware, actually. Funny how that works. So I went in with some wood restore and it ended up looking gorgeous. I wanted to do this on the outside wood first and then see what I wanted to do with the inside because I knew that the two woods were different kinds. And so I wanted to make sure that they would match Ain't she beautiful? And before going in to stain these little trim bits, I wanted to go in and fill in the cracks in between the two pieces of trim in each corner with some natural wood filler. This filler is stainable and also matches the tone and color of the wood that I'm working with. So it ended up blending in really smoothly and just gave a really professional finish to all the corners and filled it in superbly. I am so, so happy with the results of this. So once everything was all good with wood filler, I went in with some rub on poly and this just gave it a really nice shine and also added some protection to that raw wood that was there. I actually ended up staining the inner trim there with two different colors of stain actually to make it match the outer trim. And so I didn't show this process because I didn't really film a lot of it because it was a lot of trial and error and figuring out which color worked best to match it but I found that it was a combination of two stains that I will make sure to link in the description below.
Here is the final result. guys so that is the finished product i am pretty proud of this i didn't think that it would be as easy as it was but it was actually pretty simple to do once i had all of the parts that i needed for it after sending her the pictures she really liked how it turned out the only thing that she wanted to change about it was to put cane on the top and then glass over the cane so i'm going to be doing that for her in the future and i will be making a video teaching you guys how to do a glass tabletop so make sure you guys stay tuned for that so let's go over prices so i got this piece off of facebook marketplace for 45 dollars and for the materials i spent about 30 on the hardware and and then for the cane, the cane was definitely the most expensive part. I had to spend about $75, but I only used about half of that. So I'm gonna count that as $35, $40. And then for the trim that I got at Home Depot to go around the cane, I spent about $7.50 each, cause I got two. And I didn't use all of that. It gave me a little extra trim on the side. So I'm gonna count that as like $12. And then the stain pen that I got was about $10. So all in all, I spent about $137 for this entire piece and it goes so well with her furniture that she already has and I think it'll look great in her space. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned a lot. I know I did and I hope you guys stay tuned for more episodes of Miss Flips. Stay flipping guys. Mwah.